Hi guys. So welcome to 265 Online. I am making this video to practice online lectures and also to review uh, this particular building, the Bibliothèque of Saint Genevieve, which we discussed in class. Um, so the red dot here on the bottom left hand corner of the screen indicates that the project is going to be test material and I'm going to place these little indicators in both the digital and in-class slides to help you guys study. So by the end you should have a little catalog of what your material will be. Okay, so as we look at this project, Henri Le Bruce completes this project in 1850 and with it he creates a new typology in architecture. This is the first modern public library. And remember, the Enlightenment, or Age of, Age of Reason, has just ushered in a new era in academic and intellectual thought. And a library is absolutely a direct result of this movement. So the image that we're looking at here, which is lovely and nice and symmetrical, um, highlights the interior organization of the space. So Le Bruce takes inspiration from ancient Roman classical basilica, which you can see in the proportions in the perfectly semicircular double barrel vaulted roof, which is kind of this guy up here. We see these two arches. And in the clear story windows. So we see this row of windows up here allowing light in, but not kind of directly allowing people to look out the window. These are typical of uh, Basilica. However, his choice here of exposing the iron lattice work was seen as really radical for this time. He even chooses to specifically paint it dark so that it's emphasized within the interior space. So this contrast that he creates is a purposeful intent towards embracing a new building material. Remember, iron would be relatively new for this time um, and have it stand out against this traditional masonry architecture. So taking a closer look at the interior, um, looking at the ground floor plan, there's an unassuming entrance, which you actually kind of can't tell from this plan, but the entrance is right here, and you have to cross through this entrance hall and then go upstairs to get into the reading area. And this is the path that most visitors to the space would end up taking. The spaces on the left and right here um, are stacks of books. So these are protected places where the books are not exposed to light or to too many people kind of handling them. So remember, this is the first public library, and you may wonder where are the books coming from? Where was the first set of material from? So it was from actually a nearby abbey, the Abbey of Saint Genevieve, which is the namesake for this library. Um, it was a nearby monastery in Paris. And the monastery had collections of original handwritten manuscripts that needed to be preserved and protected from light. So Le Bruce separates them on purpose in this design um, only for access for the librarian. So the books are protected, the people go here to use the reading room, and they don't use these stacks that exist on the ground floor plan. So this leaves the second floor, or as I have it labeled here, the first floor plan, um, but this upper level to be free and bright and open for reading space. So the shelves at the perimeter of the space um, have the more popular books here, and then in the center you have tables for reading and tables for seating. This, um, this exact plan that we're looking at here is different than what actually ends up happening. So if we just jump back to this image, you see that the tables are spread across like this. Well, he has to actually accommodate for more seating in his design. The library becomes really popular for students and for visitors. Um, it had gas lighting originally that would have been on until 10 p.m. at night so people could stay here into the evening and read at night and there was a lot of demand for the space. So he ends up having to accommodate different tables here just like I've drawn with this gray boxes um, indicating how the tables end up being placed for more seating for more people to use this space. So an original perspective drawing here, that's kind of an original hand drawing from Le Bruce, shows us his first ideas of how this interior is supposed to look and be rendered. And you can see it's reflecting the original plan with shelving in the middle. Um, it also actually, interestingly, has more gabled roofs here than what ends up happening. So those clean barrel vaults that are part of the final project, it kind of took him a moment to get there. You can see that the Underneath of this lattice work is a semicircular barrel vault, but the top is still gabled, and I'll in a minute show you how that plays out here. 
Okay. So the space is organized with stacks on the ground floor and then reading room at the upper level. And the way that he connects this is with this extra volume or mass of vertical circulation that he uses to connect the upper and lower levels. And here we can see the kind of trajectory someone takes to rise or ascend up to this chamber of knowledge or vault of knowledge in the second floor. And it's worth pointing out that this is actually a purposeful metaphor here equating light with knowledge in the design. So as you ascend the stairs, you see the light and you get educated. Um, it all relates to the enlightenment here. Okay, and then the last image of the Bibliotech in Genevieve is showing the facade as it exists in the city today. And so this is that somewhat unassuming door we see in the ground floor plan. Um, LaBruce was keenly aware of the fact that this particular neighborhood and area in Paris had some really visually strong, triumphant buildings that were ornamented and detailed on their facades. And so he designs an unassuming facade on purpose to allow the viewer to kind of be wowed by the discovery of the reading room when they get to the second floor and this big, beautiful space emerges and opens up. So as the first public library, Labrousse really defines this typology for what will be hundreds of years to come. I mean, just think about the basement floor and the first floor of the Woodbury Library. We still have stacks protected below and then some more popular books around the perimeter of the first floor and a reading area in the center of the first floor. So this typology is widely used, redeployed in different ways, of course, but this precedent has heavily been studied by all people designing libraries, um, and so you should know it too. Okay, that's it. I hope this first little quick lecture was good. I'll keep going. More, more in a minute.